I grew up in a borough of Hackney in London. Very inner city, very diverse, very multicultural, very deprived. There was an English teacher at school. There was a bunch of boisterous young boys. And he decided that, you know, maybe by them doing some form of adventurous activity, they will fall in love with it and they will keep themselves out of trouble. Absolutely loved it. I um, got in a Wayfarer for the first time and it was just like, wow, I'm, I'm in control of something and it's me and it's no one's telling me what to do. I've, I've got the freedom to do that myself. And I was hooked from the very first time. But it wasn't just the activity itself, it was the people that were there. So the youth leaders, um, the people who taught me to sail, boy, they've left an impression on my life. You know, they've changed my life. They've opened up the art of the possible, giving me that latitude and guidance in terms of this activity. But more than that, it gave you guidance in how you were to conduct yourself with inside life and, and how you negotiate and meet with people and, and how, you, how, you, how, how you have relationships. You know, how to adapt, how to be adaptable for, for things that aren't necessarily going right. These things were all important, all seminal, all what make the person. I had not seen one episode of Race Across the World um, until my daughter said, we're going to do it. And we got a phone call, we really liked your application. Would you mind doing a Zoom call, doing a Zoom call? Would you mind coming down to, the, to our um, production studio to do something to camera? and some it's camera. A phone call came to say, oh, we think we might need to let your employers know that you're gonna be away for a time. Having that intense, long period of time with my daughter was really special. And that's one of the main reasons for me doing that, because I will never, ever get that chance again. Look, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a sports person. So I was upset that we didn't come first and we saw other people's names inside there. And that actually took me about an hour and a half to actually get over. It was on camera, they just cut it. But I was upset, but that's the competitive inside me. But just to know that we had got from the beginning of that journey to the end of it, and we made it to the end, one of three couples to make it to the end, was just phenomenal. I think the transformation of sailing and the RYA is not just down to the RYAs and the organisation. I think it is down to their stakeholders, the member clubs that are involved with this as well. They need to be the, the, the driver of change as well. They have got a massive stake with inside this. So if your club is not inclusive, why? Do you not see different people in your club? Why not, you know? And it's not just a race thing or an ethnicity thing, but are we seeing more women inside there? Are they in positions of power and leadership? Are there young people inside there? Have they got a say within what happens with inside there and it's not tokenistic? Are there people that may have a disability with inside there? You know, are there people whose, whose sexual orientation might be different than, than yours, you know? It's about inclusion. It's about getting all of these different people involved with inside the running, the making, the, 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 the family of what a club is, yeah? And clubs play a crucial role in this, yeah? Because where else are, are the new people who are entering into this, this, this wonderful sport that we call sailing? Where are they coming from? It comes from the club first and foremost. Yeah, so you have a crucial role, clubs have a crucial role in, in transforming, you know, sailing and, and the RYA and, and water sports as a whole.